Getty will charge in the basket, flip it up and he's fouled. Maggetti gets the bucket and a trip to the free throw line, but it can only make it a four point game. Cayman goes inside and Maggetti's equal to the hurt. With three, with two, wings it. Oh, Neil by Bingo, a one hand, 50 foot fling by Corey Maggetti. <laughs> It was more about like the forgiveness and, and what it what is next? What do you want me to do? What who do I supposed to be? It was almost like God really wrapped his arms around me. Personal foul on Maggetti. Geiger gets the ball back. Geiger's ball. Come on, we're gonna do a quick run down to half court. Come on, guys. All right, I'm gonna do it for him. Man, I want to hear, uh, how'd you choose basketball? I got like this passion, like, man, I want to, I really want to improve at this game. I was absolutely terrible, and I just kind of really worked at it from, from that remainder of time. For me, honestly, it wasn't even about playing professionally. It was just that I was really intrigued with the game of basketball, and from there, I just kind of had a passion, and my dad always told me, hey, if you're going to try to do something, work as hard as you can, put in the hard work. And then the, uh, your NBA career, Several different teams, but the, the longest stint was Clippers, right? Yes, longest stint was uh, was with the was with the Clippers. Had an unbelievable time, you know, as far as playing for that team, and you know, we made a run. It was yeah. the first time that this team had made it in the playoffs in you know over a decade, wow. I believe, and so you know, we had a good run. Yeah, and then announcing for them, mm -hmm. does that feel like it fits right in? You know, for me, it was just more about the opportunity. And from there, it just kind of took off. I did a few college games, and then the college games kind of led me to eventually working for the Clippers and, mm. and doing their TV. I know the NBA schedule, crazy, mm. yes. 82 games, and then also announcing. Mm -hmm. How have, you know, you have four kids. Yeah. How, how are you able to balance, you know, all of the, uh, the responsibilities, both when you were playing, you know, and also now with announcing, with being a dad? Well, I must say, uh, in the beginning, I think it was more about, you know, my wife really just kind of handling a lot of that. You know, I felt like I was very selfish because I was trying to play this game and trying to be the best that I can be. And when I first had, you know, my son Sergio, the perspective started to change. Like, wow, you know, it's honestly not about me anymore. Mm. It's about him. How, how have you grown as a dad in the last several years? You know what, I think it's really been based off of uh, my relationship with Christ have really changed. I, I, I wouldn't say I was a believer. My grandfather was a minister uh, at a church in Chicago, which, you know, I knew about the Bible, but I didn't have this personal relationship. And, you know, my wife would tell me all the time that, you know, are you like a cardinal Christian? And that's kind of how I felt when I really take that deep dive into myself personally. And um, I remember, you know, when I retired, I was trying to figure out what I, what I was going to do when I retired as far as, you know, my plan. And uh, coaches would always say, it, you know, if you're, not, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. And I felt like every single year I was doing more rehab than actually preparation for my craft is playing a game. So things are at a low point for you? It was at, it was at the lowest The lowest point. you've been? Yeah. At that time, I get injured, and then I, I was just kind of just like, man, this is what I've been doing since I was 18 years old, you know, as a young kid, and now here I am, like, where, where am I going? And um, March 9th, 2014, is when I gave my life to Christ. Awesome. I remember walking in my closet, and I got on my knees, and I, I just started to just cry, man, you know? And I say that with great humility, because I'm not a, you know, if you talk to, talk to my wife or anybody that knows me, I don't think you've ever seen me cry. I don't think they've ever seen me cry yeah. whatsoever. 
And, was uh, that like cry desperation? I need you more. Yeah, it was. It was. It was more about like the forgiveness and and what it what is next? What do you want me to do? What who do I supposed to be? And um, and all of a sudden is it was almost like God really wrapped His arms around me. What like did you feel was changing quickly for you? You, you know what I, I think it was. Um, maybe slow to anger, yeah. I would say, it is a huge thing bars. I'm always more of a very quiet person. And then if I was angry, I would get angry, right? And um, and when all of a sudden it started, I started to understand and, and start to read and see where God wants this anger to push this anger towards. So now I started to kind of push it towards, let me open this book and start to get more knowledge. That's more. awesome, man that really started to prompt me to be a better dad. Love that. So thinking further ahead, you know, when your kids, when they're adults, mm -hmm. when they look back at the time when they were in your home, what, what do you hope that they're gonna remember from you? You walk in character, you walk in integrity, and you know that Jesus loves you. You know, every single day, you know, things will get tough, right? You know, you. It's gonna be yeah. like a hill. It's never gonna be the but same. But he's consistent. But the consistent part is, yeah. is is God. If I can leave my kids with that, I feel like as a as a parent, I, I've done my job.